we greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we've got a full team here today, uh, substituting for Walter and Nina Zagrevich, who are in uh, Europe, and God is blessing them. They are so busy having up to five, six meetings a day. Uh, of course, that's teaching in the Bible school. And they've got them traveling all over the place. Uh, <laughs> they're flying. They're going by train, <laughs> by car. And they're cold, as I said in yesterday, if you caught it yesterday with Tom McLaughlin and us. But today we got our special guest, uh, uh, Albert Ramirez. And Lord uh, is going to use him to bless us. Uh, as he does on every broadcast that he shows up for. And we were sure he was going to be there. So uh, Marge joined me just because I hadn't heard back from Albert. And so uh, I, I got my dear wife here with me today. Praise the Lord. But here's time for you to do a little evangelism with us. If you have a cell phone, uh, I'm trying to get it on there. There we go. Like I do. If you have a laptop or however you're viewing this, you can take that and do some evangelism. I'll go on and hit share on your uh, on on your on your instrument that you're using, and others that maybe normally wouldn't get to hear it. Maybe in Timbuktu, maybe <laughs> in, in Saudi Arabia. Maybe in uh, uh, parts of the world, they understand English and they see this English broadcast and they begin to watch that. I know that's how years ago broadcasting in China, uh, when we were translating into the Chinese languages, because they got more than one language over there, but Mandarin is the main one. And they would hear me being translated, but for the English, they would begin to listen. And we were able to share the gospel like that in Russian and many other places. But today, it's going to be in straight English, unless Albert moves in the gifts of the Spirit and begins to start preaching in uh, another language. Uh, but uh, we want to report uh, that uh, though we, though Marge and I, uh, Tony and Marge Abram, uh, we want you to hit that share button like I did and share so that others may enjoy. You know, I said this yesterday that uh, the gospel, you, we are saved. And, and not only we are saved just to get to heaven, but God, the Lord Jesus Christ, in some of his last words he spoke before he ascended into heaven was, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And God calls everyone not just preachers, not just Brother Albert, uh, not just uh, Tony Abram, but he has called you as a believer because he that believeth, and if you are a believer, then you are called also to serve. You say, well, I'm not a preacher. Well, you don't have to be a preacher. You just got to know Jesus and to know him is life and death. And before... Uh, uh, we we hear from our dear guest, Brother Albert. Marge is going to uh, lead us in prayer, a blessing upon you, a blessing upon this broadcast today. Could I just read the verse of scripture I have first? I was going to use that tomorrow, dear. Okay, okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, you'd like me to pray for the yes, broadcast yes. and for uh, our ministry today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you in the precious name above every name, the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you today for, Lord, the ministry that you are going to give to us as we share the word of God. Brother Albert, as he shares, Father, mm -hmm. use him by your Holy Spirit and direct him, Tony, myself. Lord, in Jesus' yes, name, Lord. that we will speak the words Amen. of eternal life, Lord. Amen. We will minister to and uh, 
minister to those that are in need. Yes. Lord, as people yes, are listening Lord. today, encourage them, Lord, Lord, with the word of the Lord. Lord, we can say words, but they have to be anointed from your word. And so, Father, we just ask in Jesus' name that you will quicken us. And Father, those that are hearing the word of the Lord, let it quicken to their spirit. Let them receive that their needs being met. Lord, deliverances, salvations, Lord, healings, all the needs being met, financial needs, and all of the people being encouraged to do the will of God and to reach out to others, Lord, as you have given yourself for us. Father, we ask your rich anointing and blessing now upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, uh, just to add to this prayer request, we pray for Walter and Nina Zagrevich. Yes. Lord, yes. Uh, you see how they have a vision for global vision in that praying for the nations, praying for one another, reaching out to the nations. And Lord, is there in uh, uh, that part of Europe, Lord, uh, that is a, a, a mighty mission field. Uh, Lord, just anoint them in all their services, uh, in the schools they're teaching in. And Lord, uh, keep them safety, safely, Lord, as they are on trains, on planes, and by automobile, Lord, even maybe buses as well. But Lord, use them this week and next week uh, in a mighty way. Let you cover them with your power and anointing. And as we, and like Albert Ramirez, this prophet of the Lord, and others that are coming on, Lord, we ask that you will anoint us, that we may bless others in the name of Jesus, no matter what part of the world they're in. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. I know you've been waiting to hear from our dear brother. And, you know, we have different wonderful people coming on the broadcast uh, from uh, doing the week. And uh, we always look forward uh, uh, to Brother Albert. Normally he's on Thursdays. So you can mark those Thursdays on your calendar. And uh, he is a mighty man of God who has astounded me many times uh, with his prophecies and, and being able to be, be so filled with the spirit of the Lord that the spirit of the Lord just rolls out, out of him. And he and his wife uh, have, have been attacked by the enemy by the, oh, the flu bug or whatever it was, but they didn't stay down. They claimed that promise of God. And of course, maybe I'm telling some of his testimony, but I, I asked him how he was before the broadcast began. He said, I'm healed by the power of Jesus. So Praise the Lord. <laughs> Brother Albert Ramirez, you, you man of God, we just appreciate you. And what do you have to share for us with us? Hey Amen. Always, always just that uh, we, uh, we were talking about how we were going to conduct this, this broadcast today. You and I just a few minutes ago. Well, it's always good to conduct the, 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 any broadcast with the word of God, because Jesus is the logos. He is the living word. And anytime we meditate on the word, we get, we get that anytime, you know, from what the word of God tells me is that when anytime we meditate on the word of God or even fellowship, I like to say this because I used to have a friend that was very knowledgeable in the word, um, very yeah, memorized a lot of the word of God. And, but it, it, it comes when the eternal life, which is the nature of God inside us comes forth when we meditate, we fellowship the word, you know, iron sharpening iron, when we fellowship the word. We start talking about it. We start saying, what do you think this means? Brian? What do you think God means by this? Or we share the word of God, something like that. It, 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 the Holy Spirit comes on the scene. and He's our teacher. He's our instructor. So he starts teaching us. Anytime you and I, I used to go to lunch with this brother, his brother Jim Halverson. I think you know him, Tony. Uh, but he, uh, we used to fellowship the word during lunch. And, and God's presence, God's spirit would come on the scene. And the Holy Spirit would start teaching us, start giving us revel new revelation of, of scriptures and things because we were fellowshipping the word. We were communing. We were supping with the Lord himself, the living word, you know. Um, so anytime we, you know, we fellowship the word of God as we do on these broadcasts, 
Uh, we share the word of God. It's so important to me. It always is. Uh, you know, I, I I can't say I'm perfect and always meditating on the word, but I meditate on the word as much as possible because it's what is what creates in us the divine nature. It's what brings forth um, God's nature in us. It creates and then it brings it forth. If if the word of God, we've got scriptures memorized and like for especially for like healing. I mean, when we have scripture memorized, it just becomes a part of you. It's not just memorized words. It's 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 those those words and those belief in those words. What it does is it it activates that eternal life nature that's within us when we speak them, when we release our faith in those words. And it then it has an impact in this physical realm because words is what created this physical realm, right? God's God said. And then things were created. He created everything. So anytime, you know, we fellowship and commune like this with the word of God, um, it always blesses me to talk about God's word and, and how important it is for us to, to meditate on the word, not just, not just read it and memorize it, but to make it a part of you, to be doers of that word. You know, was it uh, James one twenty two? Be doers of the word, not hearers only, but um, it, it's just to... You know, and, and we all are, you know, I'm not saying we're all perfect in doing it like we should, but we strive for the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus, daily trying to, you know, pr preach it. And the more we, we preach it and teach it, um, the more the more we speak it to others, it is spirit and it is life. And it is what ministers to people when we speak it to them, when we speak it to them on this broadcast. When we pray for someone, when we pray the word of God, that's why I always incorporate scripture when I pray for someone, because it is spirit, it's life first and foremost, and I believe that. And when I believe that, and I'm releasing it in the people, it it begins to have an impact, or it, it or the gift of the Holy Spirit takes hold of it and manifests instantaneous healing, or 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 by faith, faith uh, a healing coming by faith is first the blade, then the stem, then the full manifestation. And of course, we learn by that. I think I do I, anyway. Learn by that. If, if if it doesn't come instantaneously, then I know I'm taking it by faith. And like I said, that's usually first the blade. You start feeling a little bit better. Then the stem. You start feeling more better. You know, forgive my English. And then then the full manifestation, full corn in the ear. Jesus said in Mark four twenty eight is the full manifestation of your healing. That's how faith is supposed to work. It's not always supposed to be instantaneous. It's supposed to be, you know, we, we're just supposed to believe what God's word says because God says in Jeremiah one twelve that I, he watches over his word to perform it. And it's up to us just to believe his word and then act upon it, speak it, preach it, teach it, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, you speak it when when we were in a, a circumstance. And, uh, and, and, then, and then I believe also when, if we're, if we do it corporately, like for example, if you, in people in Ukraine that are in a war right now, if people corporately get together, the body of Christ, because we're one body, and every one of us have a, a significant part to play in the body of Christ. But when we speak it corporately, believing, believing that word, because it's very easy to doubt. You know, doubt and unbelief is very easy to do. I mean, because we, you know, if, if we're going by our five senses, we don't see things happening. We don't see angels ministering angels fighting in spiritual battles we don't see a lot of things but when we believe what god's word says because we've read it in there because it is god's word it is life it is spirit then we can believe that that when we pray uh, this I, I always have a visual going on when i pray some I, I, like if i take authority over a demon a spirit if i do matthew 16 19 it says jesus i'll give you the keys he said, whatever you bind, he didn't say whatever you asked me to buy. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And he says, in my name, you'll do these things, right? He said, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So I always have a visual, like if I'm taking authority over a demonic spirit or principality power, I, I picture in my mind that, that there's angels or God's Holy Spirit is, is binding that demon and casting it into outer darkness. I, I'm always believing that when I'm saying that, when I'm praying something like that. So if we do that corporately, you know, when there, when there is a spiritual battle going on, not only a physical one in the war in, between Russia and Ukraine, 
<laughs> that God God answers. You know, angels are at work. <laughs> they're doing. They're doing. There's a spiritual warfare going on, as well as a physical warfare. So, this, like I said, this is why it's so important to to know the word, to meditate upon it, to be to make it a part of you by speaking it and acting upon it. You, you know, uh, Brother Albert, uh, talking about the word and how powerful it is. Uh, I know that uh, my, especially my wife, uh, she's got her uh, <laughs> eyes on the word all the time, reading it. And and uh, but we we get up and want to have devotions in the morning, and we have them at night uh, when we go to bed. And uh, we we confess the word. The word is powerful. Amen. And. and uh, I often say that we need to hear the word. We need to meditate. And until that meditate goes from a knowledge to a belief, <laughs> when we get it down in our spirit, and then we begin to confess it, it has power. Because we read in the word that uh, uh, the first chapter of John, uh, in the beginning was the word. The word was with, was, uh, with, with God, God, and the word was God. That was the Lord Jesus Christ, and all Amen. things are made by him, and all things consist and are still moving because of him, and if it wasn't for him, uh, there would be nothing, uh, but thank Amen. God, he is the living word, and when we're talking, and like you're sharing right now, we're talking about something that's not just some dead written uh, uh, history, we're talking about something that is alive. Something Amen. living, it's a person. You can't separate uh, the word of God uh, from God himself because he is in the word. Praise the Lord. I Amen. remember when I first uh, was saved, I wasn't saved a long time. And I it, and it was even before I was at a calling to the ministry, when I had some little cards, like business cards, and I would... I would find a scripture and I would handwrite them and pretty and I would read them over every day and they finally grew to I had hundreds of them and, and <laughs> I would go over them every day and uh, I, I was trying to memorize but you you do you know it had to get down in my spirit Amen. and and as you constantly uh, meditate upon it it's like a a cow, I, I've used this illustration, it may sound a little crude, but a cow eats grass, and uh, it, it feeds up with it. And then you'll see that cow lay down and begin to chew like it's eating. Well, it is eating. That from that first stomach, it, it, it regurg regurgitates that uh, like, a, like a round... Uh, like a little golf ball that's about to uh -huh. it comes up and it chews and chews and it swallows and it goes down into that second stomach where it really brings nourishment and brings, if it's a cow, it brings that white milk. You uh, <clears throat> eating green grass and giving white milk. Yes, we know the kids <laughs> know that and wonder how that could be. But that's that's how the word is. We hear Amen. And we get it in our mind and we chew it as we meditate and go over it. And it's also a way God speaks to us. He really speaks to us when we can get it from our mind. And all of a sudden we have, oh, it wasn't that wonderful. My, I, oh, that word. And what it's happening, it's gone. It's become the rhema, the living word. And the word of God is living. Praise the Lord. And Marge, when, you, when you're reading the word, uh, especially at night, I know that you always, do, like last night, there was a, several times you you jumped out of that, you're reading and said, Tony, listen to this. And of course, I've heard it over and over, and it's a blessing. And uh, it's probably written down on one of my cards because I still have those cards here somewhere. <laughs> and I should be still going over them. And, uh, and it's alive, isn't it, Marge? Amen. And I'm so glad we have that word hidden in our hearts that we will not sin against the Lord. You know, I, a thought came to me about my sister. When she was saved, she said something very comical that I still smile about. She's gone to be with Jesus, but 
what a worshiper she was. She worshiped God. But she said when she was saved, when she first accepted Christ as her savior, she said, Lord, don't save me. And, and if you know, I'm not going to last. Well, you know, the word says when he's begun a work, he will complete that work. And it's by faith. Everything we we walk in faith in our Christian life. life. So some people that are unbelievers, they want to see everything. But the Bible says, believe, and then you'll see the glory of God. So as we believe the word and that's in our hearts, that he's put in our hearts, and we've read it, let, let us just bring it to our remembrance and use that word against Satan. And Satan needs to hear us rebuking him and rebuking these sicknesses and viruses and and all types of diseases. He needs to hear us confessing that we are believe God. We don't believe what the enemy is trying to put on us, but we believe God. Amen. That word is living. And I know that's in your ministry, that's as you minister to people on a personal basis, I've seen you. Uh, I, I know that what you give them from the Lord is mixed with the word of God out of the Bible. Uh, I, I, I've heard it come forth. Isn't that right, Albert? Amen. You know, because like I said, Jesus said, my word is spirit, it's life. In John 6, 63, you know, if it's spirit and it's life, and I mix, I, and we are, we're spiritual beings, and faith is spirit. It's a spiritual substance of things that we hope for, things that we hope for, things we imagine, things that are going on in our minds and our imaginations and our thought life. You know, when we, when we, when we apply faith to it, yeah, I mean, even in the negative, you got to stop and think if we're, if, you know, because I, I remember that this is one kind of a crude example was, I remember I was driving down the freeway and I was, I, I just came back to Vietnam and, and there was, the economy was really bad and, you know, there was a recession and couldn't find a job, couldn't do anything. And then I had a car, right? I bought a car with some money I saved up while we were over there in Vietnam and I came back. And, and I bought a car, you know, a nice 1970 Firebird, really nice car. I like that car. Wish I still had it. It'd be worth some money nowadays. But anyway, it would, uh, you know, I was driving in and I blew a head, a head gasket. You know, the car started overheating. I was on the freeway. I said, oh, my God. I said, now what? What more could happen? Saying the wrong thing. I wasn't saying it was far from it. You know, Catholic and not, you know, bad Catholic at that. But I mean. Uh, you know, I wasn't saved, and I and I said that, and I and I, and I started thinking the words, and sure enough, blew a rod. You know, something else worse happened. I mean, things just started happening, and 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 we don't realize that that through our words, you know, uh, we give uh, we give we're God's creation. You know, I'd, I'd always like to try to mention this is that we. It's just, uh, Ephesians 2 6 says that we are seated in heavenly places. Now he's talking about believers, not unbelievers seated in heavenly places, but believers that believe in Christ. We are seated in heavenly places. It didn't say you're going to be in that verse that says you are seated because that's what God accomplished in Christ Jesus. That's our spiritual position in this world. You know, we're God gave this world to man, you know, us with Psalm 115, verse 16, I think. It says that the, the heavens and the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth is he given to man. So we're supposed to oversee this word. He says in Genesis 126, 128, you know, uh, 128 says if the word gets out, he goes, subdue it. If it gets out of whack, subdue it. We sub How do you subdue it? You subdue it with words. Words will change things. It changes. You know, World War II was done, I believe, because American Christians quit sinning and went back to uh came back to God and started praying and believing and the war was over. You know, it took a few years. Yeah, but it, it, the war was over. And this is why it's so important to be corporate in our prayers when believing together as one body, one you know, of Christ uh, is be, and, and hold that, hold that good confession because it will, it does work first the blade. Then, you know, we started winning victories during World War II because Christians were believing. And I, and I'm totally convinced that that's why that war was won. And every war is won because we start believing and praying and we come back to God and we come back, we ask the Lord to forgive us our sins and we, we get back in our position, our right position, our spiritual authority. And then we speak things, we pray things, and then God moves because he's given this earth to man. And we're supposed to subdue it if it gets out of whack if or if the devil gets it out of whack. You know, Adam and I'm, I'm convinced if Adam had, God had created that from the beginning, 
that if Adam had not uh, yielded himself to to Eve's uh, instruction, uh, you know, he could have rebuked that devil in the garden. That we never had that whole fall at the beginning. He got, you know, I don't, I don't believe that that God, you know, ordained that to happen. It's just happened because man is creation yielded to the devil. Period. But I mean, we still do that today. But like a but point of making all this, saying all this is that that words, death and life is in the power of the tongue. You know, uh, we we create things uh, by words. Things are held to, together by God's word. You know, the whole universe. If we stop and think about it. You know, in Hebrews chapter one, I think it is. It says that the whole world, that the world is created by Him and for Him, but also is held together by His word. It's if if by his word, by God's word. Uh, it's amazing that, to know that if one little thing, if he is, one thing got out of whack, the whole universe would implode, you know, but words are very powerful. It, it, it is so important when we make them part of us. And like I said, words change things. It creates, words creates, uh, words, you know, stop and think about it. When when uh, the angel Gabriel came to Mary, it was words that created, it, it says in, uh, what is it in, um, First Peter, First Peter, it says in First Peter one twenty three, it says, "Having been begotten again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible." That's the word. He goes through the word of God. It says, "We've been begotten again, all of us. We get born again." First uh, Peter two uh, one twenty three. It says, "Through the word of God, who lives and, ab and abides forever." Okay. Then you got the word of God says this in uh, James one eighteen, of His own will, God's own will, He brought forth. He brought us forth by the word of truth. It's the word of God that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Well, we are the first fruits. And like I said, we have we, we have a spiritual position in, in, uh, in God as believers. And then things that we say, they, it really impact even the negative things. You know, if, if we, uh, this is my, this is my perception of things. If we, you know, and this is mine, people can agree or disagree with it, but I, because of our spiritual position, if I'm a believer and I say something negative, I give the devil permission. I give demons permission to do something of what I'm speaking negative about. Because we have, the, we're the the spiritual authorities here on earth in Christ Jesus. He re, he restored that that authority, that dominion through Christ. That's what he, Jesus came back to do as a man. That's why he says in was it John five twenty five? I think it is. Some around there, he says that he said that, that and he has given us authority over all over all things because he is the Son of Man. He didn't say Son of God; he said Son of Man. Jesus had to come as a man to defeat the devil on on human terms, as well as through the Word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we 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 have a lot more impact in this world than things that happen, things that are going on, um, is because of words positive and negative. You know, we give the devil permission. Through words, through our words, we, uh, you know, especially, and especially believers, because we're the ones that should know better. We're the, through the word of God. We're the ones that should know better. We're the ones that should, should be releasing the authority. We are the policemen of, of this world, this, of the spiritual world right now on this earth because of Christ. You know, so, you know, and, and if the policeman doesn't do his job, then of course chaos starts, you know, you, you start having Chaos like you have in San Francisco, where they they the law, which is you know police, the law, the law enforcement. We are law enforcers in the spiritual realm, but law enforcement like in San Francisco, where they pass the government passed law, law enforcers. They pass laws to where you you know if you steal thousand up to you can steal up a thousand dollars worth of merchandise and get away with it. You know that's that's lawlessness. You know. So if we were to do that spiritually, then of course we allow the devil to go a little bit pornography, this, this and that. Then of course all that stuff starts growing because of that. And the crime grows in San Francisco because of that. So I mean, we we are the spiritual authorities <coughs> as believers, and we need to exercise that authority. We need to bind and loose. Jesus said they were the keys <coughs> that we need to bind and loose and release. God's will, God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Uh, we need to pray the word of God. Now, Marge, uh, if uh, if I start speaking negatively, 
she gets on me, uh, Tony, <laughs> and straight out, and, and vice versa. And we, like uh, last night, I remember she sneezed. And uh, I we, we have a saying, Marge, I don't hear anything. And what we normally <laughs> say when we sneeze is, Lord, I'm taking healing. I learned that from uh, Kenneth Hagen uh, years uh, ago. I heard him say that. And I, I and I believe it works because uh, the Satan hears us speak the word. And there, uh, there's a there's a program on TV. Uh, there's by the Seven Day Adventists, and I think it's uh, I, I know they emphasize this. And uh, I don't agree with all things with the Seven Day Adventists. Yeah. Like good people in there, but uh, they they say uh, man shall they keep repeating this. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, because that's how we rebuke the enemy. He Amen. when we begin to speak. Now, when Jesus was tempted, when after the Holy Spirit came upon him at there at the water baptism by John the Baptist, uh, when he baptized Jesus, and and the, and the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus like a form of a dove. And he was driven by the same Holy Spirit into the wilderness because the Father wanted him to go through something. Now, gee, there is only one God, but he manifests himself. He became a man. And, and he went into the wilderness, and for 40 days and 40 nights, he prayed and fasted. And, and then here comes... Here comes Satan along when he probably Jesus was at his hungriest after. I mean, I, I, I know when I fast, it only takes a day or two that I'm starting to get pretty hungry. And uh, I know that people have visions uh, a lot of time during their fast. But I know that on some of these fasts, my, 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 my dream, my visions would be of Kentucky Fried Chicken or something, uh, but but God honors it, and fasting really isn't for the thing that you're praying for. It's really for you to bring you into a place where you can confess the word of God and believe, mm -hmm. pray the word of God. And I think it's important that we pray according to the will of God, the word of God, because the will of God is the word of God. The Bible is God's will. Uh, if we lived in the old olden times before the time of Christ, the Old Testament would have been the perfect will of God. But uh, Jesus brought a New Testament, a better testament, a better way. And uh, the, so the New Testament is the perfect will of God for our lives. And as we pray in the spirit, we're praying the, the will of God. As we pray in the spirit in our prayer languages, Tony, I just wanted to add this, that, you know, we worked with T.L. Osborne for some a few years and uh, even we're connected after we didn't work uh, for the organization. But I remember something that he said, and it was, he said it a number of times. And as Brother Albert <laughs> said, uh, as the fruit of our lips we've got to watch what we speak he would say this statement he would say mm -hmm. it would be a pretty poor devil who wouldn't give you what you have what you say you have if you say <laughs> you have sickness of course the devil is going to put it on and uh you know i remember a relative of mine years ago she didn't have cancer but i don't know why she made that confession she had cancer and sometime later, she did get cancer. Absolutely. Imagine someone making a confession like that, that you have cancer, and then she ended up with cancer. And uh, I know she came to the Lord at the end, but, uh, but you know, we have to watch our speech because God's word is so powerful. When we speak God's word, it will come to pass. It will accomplish always what it's spoken for or sent for. And, and I so I'm I'm so thankful that we can speak the word of the Lord. It's just like uh, the ba a battery, uh, say a car battery. You have a positive and a negative, and that negative doesn't put out. It uh, it it re actually resists the positive, but uh, the the positive overcomes it 
and causes things to work. I don't know all the technology and I might be a little bit wrong on that, but that's how I've understood it. And we, in the word of God, the word of God is positive. The, 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 the things that come out of the flesh, uh, the natural things, the, they do not bring the promise of God to pass. It's the positive. Uh, like yeah. what, when you came on this broadcast and I said, uh, we've been praying for you, Albert. And, uh, and the <laughs> first thing out of your mouth is, uh, I'm healed. I'm healed by the power of Jesus. Well, praise God. That's positive. Amen. Why? Because God's word says you're healed. Uh, we, we think of Isaiah. Uh, when Isaiah said, uh, looking forward to the time, he says, by his stripes, uh, we are healed. That was a prophecy. But Peter, he could look back past the cross. He could look uh, and see the finished work, uh, what Jesus did, that by his stripes, you see the stripes were laid upon Jesus before he got to the cross. He took the, the stripes to the cross. The <laughs> sins that were upon Jesus were being laid upon him when he stood before the crowd and they were cry, crying out, crucify. Even Pilate said, I find no fault in him. But the people cried out, let him be crucified. <laughs> and that's when all the sins, and as he passed the crowds, the sins of the world were coming upon him and he carried them to the cross he, and he had those stripes laid on his back. And that was our sickness and our the negative things. Oh, what Adam lost in the garden was piled upon Jesus and on that cross so that Peter, he could look back. He was there actually uh, in the natural. He was there at the cross. Uh, and he, but he, in his, in his epistle, he writes, and by his stripes, we were healed. We were our healing, our salvation, uh, our forgiveness of sins was all carried by Jesus. And how do we know? The word says so. And we Amen. do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And what did Jesus say on the cross? It is finished. Uh, hallelujah. He paid me. And uh, because of him, because he lives, we shall live also. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Amen. Alan. Praise God. Amen. You know, everything you're saying, you know, Paul, in Acts 20, uh, 32, I think it is. He's talking to the Ephesians. He said he was leaving them. He had been there with them for a few years, teaching and instructing them. And he's and then he says this to them, uh, Ephesians, I mean Acts 20, uh, verse 32. Uh but uh, okay, it says verse 31, he says, Therefore, watch, he goes, and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. And to the word, I commend you to the word, to God and to the word and uh, the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. God's word is able to build us up and to put to to develop us to the point where as, as we yield to it, we have God's not going to force all this on us. You know, he's not going to force the word on us. He's not going to make us read the word i mean if we do it out of duty instead of out of uh, meditating upon it to learn to grow and to know god it's to know god is why we meditate on the word not not just to memorize scripture show how great a memory we have or what a command we have of memorize memorizing scriptures but it's it's to know god and to know that 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 the greater one that's in us you know, I was meditating upon that the other day when I was not feeling too good. And I said, you know, greater is he that's in me, you know, greater. And I started just meditating. Just, I mean, if we just take the time to meditate on something, just one verse, it gives life to you. It it brings life and it, it, uh, 
it 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 just prevails over your thing. In fact, there's a scripture there too. In um in 1920, Acts 1920, it says, Paul was preaching the word of God. He says, and the word of God prevailed. It prevailed, it grew and prevailed. Well, it must prevail. The word of God must prevail over our circumstances, over our tests, like Jesus, the word of God is what prevailed over him, over the devil when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. Remember that? It was the word that Jesus spoke against the enemy when he came and tempted him uh, in that wilderness. And, and Jesus says, it is written, it is written, it is written. So it was the word of God that prevailed over the devil. And it's got to prevail over our flesh, over our over the devil in, that comes against us with temptations. Um, it's got to prevail over our sicknesses, our disease, our lack, financial lack. I mean, and you get people that, you, you got people that get, that get so upset Religious people, <laughs> they get upset with people that preach the gospel of prosperity. It's in the word. <laughs> I mean, what do you, if that's the case, then what do you say about, uh, you know, Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight, it says, he became poor that you might be rich. And those chapters, he's talking about finances. He's not talking about some people like to, some religious people, even some theologians like to say, well, he's talking about spiritual things, brother. No, he's not. He's talking about money in that, those chapters. You got to, that's not taking it out of context either. So, he, you know, he said he became poor that you might be rich. And then the Greek rendering of that says that he, that you might have an abundant supply, you know? So God doesn't want you to be rich. Look at, look at, look at the old Testament. Was Solomon poor? Was David poor? Was Abraham, any of those men poor? No, God doesn't want us poor. He wants, he wants to have an abundant supply because when we, when we have an abundance, we're able to share more of the gospel we're able to, to think less, have to, to, to be preoccupied with thinking about finances or things like that. But God wants us to be prosperous. So those of, those people out there that are saying, oh, he's just preaching a, a, a prosperity gospel. Well, praise God. That's part of the gospel. Paul, Paul, told, Paul said in Romans, where is it, Romans 16, I think, or 15, I can't remember which chapter, but Paul said that, told the Romans, he says, I have not ceased to fully preach the gospel. You can partially preach the gospel. You can preach the gospel of salvation. People will get saved because that's what they're hearing. That's the word of God about people getting saved. So people get saved. But if you emit or forget about prosperity and that, people will be saved and poor. <laughs> they're going to be saved and poor. They will lack. You know, and then sometimes they'll start crying if they don't gain the knowledge through the word of God. If they don't gain the knowledge through the word of God, then they're going to be poor and saved, you know, but it's important to know that we need to fully understand and meditate on the full gospel. That includes authority, dominion over all the power of the devil, Luke 10, 19, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Uh, I give you the keys of whatever you bind, whatever you lose, Jesus said. He's pointing to man when he said that, Jesus, in six, Matthew 69. You know, uh, what, whatever, uh, uh, you know, circumstances, you know, that the devil might bring against you. If he brings uh, uh, wars and, and earthquakes and famines, you know, you can pray those, pray out of those things. Who's going to change that then? You know what I'm saying? If God gave, gave us authority and gave man the earth and the heavens belong to him, and, and of course the earth too, but. But he gave man the earth, it says in the scriptures in Psalm 115. So if, if God did that and we're supposed to subdue it when it gets out of whack, then we need to speak against these famines, speak against these earthquakes, speak against. We need to pray against them. We need to pray God's word over it. Um, you know, I, I just, I, you know, like I said, people, people just, they, and you'll see whatever part of the gospel people hear, that's what they'll be acting on. That's what they'll be doing. You know, if they don't hear the other part, or, or if they hear somebody say, like a theologian, especially, if they hear a theologian say, well, God God doesn't want you to be rich. He wants you to be poor. You know, and well, that part of the scripture says he became poor, that he, you might be rich. There's a reason for him becoming poor. The re when it, when it, I, I believe when that scripture, when he says that in Corinthians, he says that because, he, he says that because Jesus lost his deity, which is, the riches of the universe. Come on, that's the riches of the universe. And he left that all behind, became poor uh, financially, physically, every way you can think of to be uh, related to man, to mankind, to man's 
weaknesses and, and ways. So God, the, the, he became poor that we might have an abundant supply. Then you got other scriptures, though, the blessing of the Lord uh, was eight, uh, was it uh, 1021, I think it is, in Proverbs, that the blessing of the Lord, it, it makes you rich and he has no sorrow with it. You got other scriptures, you know, about God pr providing, you know, and then you got scriptures that are, that talks about uh, the the money in, in, in Timothy, about money is the root of all evil. The love of money, it says, you know, people see people take things out of context and they leave things out and they don't, then they're not able to enjoy the, the full blessing of the inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus because they reject knowledge. They reject knowledge. In fact, it says that in Amos. Uh, in Amos chapter three, it says, uh, it says, uh, it says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And it says, because we don't know, then of course we perish. We suffer unnecessarily, you might say. But then right after that verse says, because you reject, he's talking to the Israelites, but he also talks to us with that verse. He said, but because you reject knowledge, you know, this and this and this will happen to you. Well, and that's what happens because we reject knowledge of God's word of of God's prosperity and God's healing. You know, some 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 seminaries teach that God doesn't heal anymore. He only taught that. He only he only healed in the beginning of the church just to prove the church. Church. I just saw the other day. Uh, I just saw something on the internet uh, about this this church group or ministry, whatever. And it says, "How do we? How do we? How do we minister to the Jews? You know, how do we preach salvation to the Jews?" You know, he's talking about Israel, right? Well, look at the, what does the word say in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22? It says, the Jew seeks a sign. That's how you do it. You 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 allow God's spirit, you draw close to God to where God's spirit's been flowing, moving through you, and sign, healings and signs and wonders uh, start taking place. They see that, and they, they'll believe that. You know, that, and I've seen that's happened with not only just Jews, but but with other un unbelievers, they see the, the, the miracles, the healings, uh, and then they accept Jesus. I, I ministered to a Jewish person, you know, I believe is a Mossad agent, ex-Mossad, in Israel just not too long ago, a few years ago, 2019, and, and he accepted Jesus, you know? He accepted Jesus. I just started telling about the miracles that God did in my life and how God healed me, and, and, the, some, and he was listening to it. And yet the other side, another friend of mine, Christian, he was he was uh telling him about all kinds of stuff and you know uh, different parts of the gospel. And and he was looking at him like kind of like nuts. <laughs> this guy, we were walking on the beach with this guy. And then I then I, I was quiet the whole time. And then I then when he got finished, I said, you know, let me let me tell you something. I go, God's not gonna force Jesus on you, Miss Yeshua. I go, he's not gonna force him on you. You choose that, you know. And I told him about things I used to deal with. I just shared my testimony a little bit. And then I said, you know what, what God, what really caused me to believe God is he did this, this miracle, this supernaturally happened, this and that supernaturally happened. I saw these things with my eyes and I believed. And then I asked him, I go, now, do you want to receive Jesus? I'm not going to force you. You don't have to join my group or anything. And he goes, Shh, absolutely. He goes, absolutely. I want to. And he got born again right there on the beach, a Jewish person. You know, so I mean, the Jew seeks the sign. The Greek seek wisdom. <laughs> Show them the wisdom of God. If you want to, an intellectual, show them the wisdom of God. You know, I, I remember ministering to people that have, that used that were coming to my meetings at one point where a lot of intellectuals seemed like scientists and everything. So, you know, here I am. I'm not I'm not an educated person, but I mean, I'm educated in the Word of God. I'm self educated in some things I've read and studied, and but I mean, uh, uh, the, I remember. Uh, one scientist came to me and he says, yeah, well, I think science has an answer for him pretty much. For I said, oh, yeah, they do. Huh? I go, tell me how, what, what great scientific thing they create. Science created a nuclear bomb that destroy the whole world. They crossbred bees. So now we have killer bees that kill mankind. Never did it before. I go, that's really benefiting mankind, isn't it? You know, and then they, they started thinking of thinking about these things and they got saved, you know, so juke the, the Greek seek wisdom and, the Jews seek a sign. That's how you lead a Jew to Christ. Tell them all the, the miraculous manifestations of God or show them. Better yet, show them. You know, show them and and, and uh, you'll see people, Jews get saved. I took too much time here, but. No, well, <laughs> it was good. And Albert, uh, time is starting to run out, but it I know. was good.
And I yes, want to say to the yes. folks that you've been listening to Albert Ramirez from, from California. Uh, he has a mighty ministry, and we 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 count it a privilege to have him here on the on the program. And uh, of course, uh, for Amen. you that may be turn, tuning in late, uh, I'm Evangelist Tony Abram, and this is my dear wife uh, of six, <laughs> um, 61 years, and uh, we have did a bit of traveling Mark. in our life and ministry. Walter likes to always say uh, when he introduces us. Uh, that uh, we've ministered in over uh, 125 countries, but that's nothing. The, the whole world needs to be ministered to. And, and this, the vision of Walter and Nina Zigarevich, uh, that that's what you're watching right now is global vision. They have a vision for the whole world. And they yeah. are uh, not only preaching, and right now they're in uh, uh, Europe and uh Europe is a mission field. Most of the countries like uh, Switzerland and Germany, less than 1% of the people ever are found in church on Sunday. So that's, that's you, can, you can get an answer from that as you think about it. There's a great need. And they're over there ministering right now. And uh, this, this week, uh, we, I've been filling in as host. And, uh, uh, and we count that a privilege too. And we want to say that uh, they are doing a lot of work. It's humanitarian work. It's like in uh, like in uh, Ukraine, okay. uh, people are coming to Christ. I know that in the beginning, when the walls came down, that people were coming to Christ uh, by the thousands over there, uh, oh, yeah. hundreds in a meeting even. Uh, and then it kind of let up, but the war has driven people back into churches yeah. that have been coming and being, uh, they're receiving their food, food from the Christians there. And this ministry, World uh, Global Vision, is helping in Ukraine doing a great work. Uh, uh, and, and many uh, are coming to Christ and many through are that coming. food program. That's right. Yes. And uh then in Cuba and in Africa mm -hmm. and in Nepal, India, there is a lot being done. And if you will look down, you will see uh, and under comments where if you want to contribute to this ministry, uh, you can do so. And uh, even uh, we don't have a sign behind our heads like there is with the address, but you can get the address down below. Uh, of your instrument of viewing. But uh, we're going to pray right now. We want to pray first. And uh, we'd like to pray for you that have been hearing the word. You might say, I, I, the word that Brother Albert was sharing that we need to speak. Well, you, there, there's a beginning spot. There's a time where you have to Amen. be saved, have to know Jesus. And today Amen. is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. And the good news we have for you that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can call upon him, repent, and you, uh, on that day that uh, Peter came out of the upper room and preached, and, uh, and they came rushing to him uh, after hearing him preach, and all the people hearing in their own language was they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were wanted to what, sir, what must we do to be saved? And, and uh, that's what the jailer cried out. And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The, today is a day to repent and open your heart. And I'm going to mm -hmm. take a few moments if, uh, if it's all right. And I'm going to invite you to pray this mm -hmm. prayer. Uh, and uh, then afterwards, Brother Albert's going to pray for the sick. He has a mighty anointing to pray for the sick. And for you that are afflicted, you that have needs, your loved ones, have you pray and agree with him. And God is going to do something today. He, yeah. His word says he will, if we can believe all things are possible in Mark 9. Okay. 23. And, uh, but first, let's, let's call upon the Lord and receive him as a personal savior. If you have not done so, Martin's going to repeat the prayer 
as I, and you, you said with her as I lead you. Close your eyes, lay your hand on your heart and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come to you. I come to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I believe what I've heard today. I believe what I've heard because today because it was out of the Bible. Because it was out of the Bible. And Lord, I know that you died for me. And Lord, I know that you died for you me. You shed your blood for me. You shed your blood for me. And you rose again from the dead. And you rose again from the dead and i open my heart and i open my heart and i confess my sin and i confess my forgive sins. me lord forgive me lord of every little big sin of my life forgive me for every little or big sin in my life i receive jesus i receive and your blood washes me clean. And your blood washes me clean. And with your help. And with your help. From this time on. From this time on. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live for you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you. And Lord, if I fail. And Lord, if I fail. Help me. Lift me up. Help me. Lift me up. Because I want to live for you. Because I want to live for you. In Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, Amen. something good has happened. The angels are rejoicing. Amen. Your name is being written in the book of life. And uh, hallelujah. You are a child of God. But do three things to build yourself up. You heard what Brother Albert told us and taught us today about the word of God. Get into the Bible. That's, that's the second. The first thing to learn to talk to the Lord. Uh, when you talk to him, that's prayer. Start your day with, if you don't know how to pray, uh, good morning. Good morning, Lord. Help me today. Talk to him like you would a friend. Second, uh, let him talk to you as you read the Bible, especially the New Testament, which is the perfect will of God for your life. Get, start reading it. And third, get into a Bible-believing Christian fellowship and start fellowshipping with people that also believe that Jesus is their personal savior and hallelujah. And now you that have a need, all the prayer requests that have come in from all over the world, we, we bring them uh, to the Lord and brother Albert is going to pray the prayer of faith and he's going to pray according to the word of God. And we're believing with him for God to do something special for you or your loved one, B Brother Albert. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the privilege being able to come boldly before your throne of grace, seeking mercy in a time of need. Lord, people out there watching, they have many needs. People in Ukraine and Russia, there's a war that needs to be stopped. We need to agree on that. We need to believe that God hears us when we say stop in the name of Jesus to the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness that are causing these wars in the Middle East, in Russia, in Ukraine, in the name of Jesus, we as a body of Christ, as the body of Christ on earth, Lord, your word calls us that. We are not, we call ourselves that because your word says we are. So we, in the name of Jesus, bind the powers, the principalities, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, the spirit, religious spirits, spirits of pride, spirits of lawlessness in Jesus' name. We bind and cast them out of these wars, the war in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas in the name of Jesus, this war of, uh, between Russia and Ukraine in the name of Jesus. We bind the principalities and the powers that are causing this war, and we cast you out of that midst of those people, of the people between these countries in Jesus' name. Lord, we command these wars to stop in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. These wars to stop in Jesus' name. Lord, we proclaim that and we thank you for it as the body of Christ on earth. And Lord, we just pray for those that are needing help, their financial help, people that need physical help, people that are sick and afflicted, people that have diseases. Lord, you said in Psalm 103, I think verse 4, you said, you bless the Lord, all, all my soul, that who forgives all our iniquities, and who heals all our diseases. So, Lord, we thank you for healing diseases out there, heart disease, 
lung disease, kidney disease, uh, any kind of disease out there. Uh, diabetes is a disease in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure is a disease. It's a heart disease in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, we were healed from that. You sent forth your word and healed us and delivered us. Psalm 107, 20, from all our destructions. We thank you, Lord, that we would receive our healing. Like Tony Marr said, when they sneeze, they say, I take healing. They take it because God sent forth his word and healed us. That's past tense. And uh, by his stripes, we were healed, past tense. So they take what has already been given. So, Lord, we take healing for every one of us, uh, for all of us together, and for those watching who need healing, take it in the name of Jesus. It's there for you. Jesus already secured it for you. So in the name of Jesus, by his stripes, you were healed, and he sent forth his word and healed you and delivered you from all your destructions. For those that have financial need, we thank you, Lord, that my God is providing. He is providing all our needs, according financial needs, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Those who need emotional healing in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that every strategy, every work of the devil is destroyed, bound, cast out of the way, out of the families, out of the marriages. In Jesus' name, Lord, we loosen faith, love, and hope upon everyone watching to receive and to take healing, to take deliverance from uh, strategies of the enemy to steal, steal, and destroy. His, his things are destroyed in the name of Jesus. The devil's strategies are destroyed by the, the name that's above every name that every name must bow to in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that people are out there being healed. Be healed right now. People out there, be set free from demonic oppression in your minds, in the name, and in your bodies too, from demonic oppression. Be set free in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you that, that marriage are, marriages are being restored, relationships being restored between father, mother, and children, in Jesus' name. Families are being restored in the name of Jesus. Every strategy of the devil to divide and to destroy, kill, steal, and destroy is destroyed. The devil's strategies are destroyed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for restoring marriages, restoring families. Lord, we thank you, especially this time of year. Father, when we think about families a lot, we thank you, Lord, for restoring families and relationships in Jesus' name. Thank you for meeting the financial needs of all of us, all of us, us included, Tony and Marge, myself and my wife, Lord, Walter and Nina and their ministries on our ministry also. We thank you, Lord. And we just thank you that the greater one is in living in us. Those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and he's greater than sickness. He's greater than poverty. He's greater than lack. He's greater than any lies of the devil that he would bring against the souls, the minds of people watching. In the name of Jesus, be set free. And we thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the glory, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we thank you for the answer right now. And as people really in action and begin to do what they've been taught to do Hallelujah. today on Shall the lessons, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And then we pray for the nations. We pray for the North America, Lord, uh, yes, Canada, Lord. The United States, Mexico, and all of Latin America. We pray for the leadership of the be saved so that yes. the might follow the leadership uh, into the kingdom of God, uh, lo loving you and serving you. All the Latin countries uh, uh, of South America and Brazil, Lord, uh, the Guianas, uh, and we pray for the P the islands of the C Caribbean, uh, the Pacific yes. Islands, Lord, uh, the, the islands of the uh, China Sea, uh, Lord, yes. uh, those inside yes. the Southern Hemisphere. China. Lord, we pray yes. for Australia, New Zealand. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Borneo. We pray for Indonesia. Uh, we pray for Papua New Guinea, Lord. Uh, we yes. pray for Madagascar, for all the countries of Africa, from South Africa. <laughs> All through Central Africa, North Africa, yes. Eastern Europe, Western Europe, mm -hmm. Asia, Lord, yes. Japan, oh, China, Lord, uh, yes. we pray for those in uh, Siberia, Lord. <laughs>
Oh, God, uh, we pray for the UK, uh, and Lord, in the name of Jesus, for the hour wide, uh, Lord, for around the world, from the North Pole to the South Pole, we bring them all before you, Lord, uh, and Lord, uh, we pray, uh, especially because of these broadcasts are going on from the United States, uh, we pray for this country, uh, Lord, uh, that the leadership would be all saved, uh, and that yes, once Lord. again, like we saw in the in the in the Old Testament, when the kings served the Lord, uh, um, the whole nation turned to God. Uh, when the kings de departed, uh, then they fell into backsliding. Uh, and Lord, heal the backsliding of the nations. Uh, let the leadership yes, be saved uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. We want to thank you, Albert, for being with us today. You've been a blessing Amen. as usual. Amen. And uh, we're going to, uh, uh, we were expecting maybe to be a host tomorrow uh, as well, unless things change a little bit. But we count it a privilege to be on the broadcast. And, and we know that uh, Walter and Nina, when they close the, the broadcast, uh, they like to say Jesus Christ this is the, the same, same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and, and forever. forever. But uh, well, we we ourselves uh, like to say that uh, God loves you, but we, and love, we you. love you, but the Lord loves you more. more. Yes. So God bless you and tell others about the broadcast and that they too may join in and be able to uh, able to receive from God's 